I'm here with Charlie Sheen on Nervous Rex, old friend, close friend, who I don't get to see as much as I'd like to because I live on the west side now, which, as you know, is like moving to China. Your friends don't come out. I'm in Santa Monica. <laughs> yeah. You went to Santa yeah. Monica High. I never knew that. Yeah, I just man. saw that right here. Yes. yes. Samo High. So you're a west side boy. Well, no, uh, Samo High by way of Malibu. Okay, well, that's yeah. still West Side. Yeah. But born in New York City. Didn't know that either. I just saw this little sheet here. <laughs> You're learning all kinds of fun um, facts about me, huh? So, born in New York, but then you moved pretty quick to the West Coast. Till, uh, when I was three. Yeah, so you have no yeah. memories in New York. Zero. But you have a New York kind of, you don't, you seem like an East Coast sharp guy, not like a Cali dude to me. Um, is it in your DNA? He, What's that about? I don't know what that's about, but people, when they first meet me, always do guess East Coast. I get that, too. You I'm know. from San Fran and lived in L.A., but I lived in New York for five years, and I got the Jewish <clears throat> Jersey mom, so I grew up with that in my ear, so I have a little East Coast in me. Um, have you ever lived in New York? I did five years there, and I had to get the fuck out because it was blame chewing you. me up. I don't blame you. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, that's five years too long. Um, I lived there during Wall Street. Right. And uh, that was only three and a half months. Okay, and that was enough. And you were working, so yeah, yeah, that was that was plenty. There's uh, there's a lot to get into there. Like, yes, yeah, it's yeah. right outside your door. It's right there. Yeah. That's what I always said. It's, you know, it's not even a phone call away. It's just a it's just a lean out the window and wave away. It, that which is dangerous for guys like you and me. I in L. A. You can pick your battles a little more wisely. Sure. New York, it's <laughs> right fucking there. <laughs> it is. Which is why I had to leave. I had some just. It just got real very quick, and I said, "This is this place is going to kill me." So I got the fuck out of Dodge. Moved to L. A. Ninety eight. Shortly thereafter, five years later, I was fortunate enough to book Scary Movie 3 where you and I met. <laughs> and we had some fun on that one, man. We got to work with, for me personally, because you're used to doing you know, big studio films. That was kind of like my big thing that I got to do and work with. You, Kevin Hart, Anthony Anderson, David Zucker, like top, top level guys. Thank you. And that was fucking amazing. That was still like my sort of... That was my moment. That was a fabulous experience. It was yeah, fun, man. Yeah. We got to know each other because we were, you know, people don't, I guess they don't know unless you've been on a movie. You're, we're like this for eight hours a day and it's about 95% hanging out, 5% working. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So we it's just like, got to know each like other. A, it's like a running back in the NFL. What's that? How's it, that? Uh, they'll run a combined Ooh, like, you know, right. 58 minutes a year. And they actually say a football game is about seven minutes of actual play time and the rest is just bullshit in between. <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, much, which is also yeah. Hollywood is hurry up and wait. You just sit around people. You're lucky to work four months out of the year in this business. Sure. And that's working a lot. That is working a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I've, I've not worked four months out of a year in, uh, in a couple of years. Um, Join the club. Yeah. It's I mean, it, you know, I, I've. Uh, I, I, I quit drinking finally, which was, uh, which was a big move. How uh, long ago? Uh, a year and a half ago. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank yeah. You, you look clear. You, you look like a clear channel. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You do. You do. You look yeah. Good. No. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, a couple of years ago, you and I starting this at noon. Yeah. I would have been like, I thought you meant AM, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like banging on a door, you know. Yeah. I could always tell when you're doing well because you're quick to respond on the phone and you're up at 7 a.m. Right. You know, right. people always say to me, like, tell me your crazy Charlie Sheen stories. And I tell and I let everyone down because I tell you them you're you not going to believe me. You don't have a lot, do you? I have zero. Yeah. Because yeah. we've hung out and never so much as had a beer, a smoked. A, we've never done anything. And people want to hear, oh, tell me about your debauchery. Right. right I'm like, right. I got nothing, man. Yeah. I could make something up. But we've only hung out working or when <laughs> right. you're, you know, right. Doing and, great. And, and, you know, um, I, I, I know we're going to get into that, that tour that, oh, yeah. <laughs> that I talked you into, um, talked myself into, um, but even then, um, everybody has, has this, this, this concept, this idea that I was out of my mind during that tour, the and, torpedo of truth tour yeah, in 2010 ish, maybe 11. Right. And you were there. I was there. For a lot of it. I want, we, I want to talk about and, that. And I, and I wasn't hammered. No, you were completely sober and everyone yeah. thought you were. And I was like, no, dude, he's at the gym every morning at the hotel running on the treadmill. Like you guys, you're okay. So first of all, I think you're one of the most, I, I get this on a much smaller scale. I'm pretty misunderstood. I think people have this idea of me because they'll just take one little thing and make it bigger. And, and you are the epitome of that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think yeah, you're really it's, misunderstood. It's, it's frustrating. It's, I could imagine it's frustrating because it's on such yeah. a large scale for you because I get it this much and you get it this much and it's right. just it right what do you what the fuck do you do it's just not fair it's just not fair 
Yeah. I'm def- I feel like I got to defend you and a couple of my other friends who have this bad reputation. I'm like, dude, he's just misunderstood. He's the fucking best guy. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not kidding. Thank and you. smart guy. I remember you'd always be reading a book on set. I'm like, he's like an intellectual, cool bro that just wants to hang with the boys, but can't walk outside because you get clobbered. I think I tried to take you out to dinner one time when we were in Canada shooting scary <laughs> movie. And within two minutes, you couldn't even take a bite of your food. And you're like, dude, this is why I can't go out. Right, right, right. And I just yeah. felt bad. I was yeah. like, dude, this isn't fun. That's the night we went out to watch a fight. That's right. Yeah. What fight was it that? It was that, a pretty big fight. It was a heavyweight uh, championship bout. Yeah, we went um, to a sports bar, which was probably a bad idea thinking about your <laughs> yeah. demographic fan base would be at a sports bar watching Most a fight. likely. Most yeah, who likely. was that? Yeah. Was that a Tyson? No, 2003. I maybe feel like it was like Holyfield. Lennox Lewis. Lennox or somebody in there yeah, yeah that's right and we yeah. didn't last long we had to leave yeah and then you had to hibernate in the hotel and i and i and i understood and again on a smaller scale i get that and fame is a weird thing like jim carrey said i wish everyone could be rich and famous for one day to see how not amazing it is <laughs> right yeah. it's i think yeah. everyone now everyone wants to be famous for the wrong reasons you got social media now instagram everyone's got a little fame and it's it's kind of a disease Fame does um, afford some freedoms, though. Oh, absolutely. You know, no, I'm not saying I don't want it. I, right, right. I, it, I, um, it has its pluses and minuses. Yeah. But for the most yeah. part, it's a good thing. I, you know, And people say that money can't can't buy you happiness. I uh, have never had money. It could rent um, it. It can rent it. it <laughs> That's it, my theory. It can also um, uh, create moments... Um, that 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 insulate you enough from the chaos to per, perhaps generate some happiness. Or on the other side of that, uh, sometimes being alone too much with your thoughts for someone like me, it could also be a bad thing. Sometimes I'm too much of that could be bad. So you got to fill in the day with stuff. Sure. So I've been on a good healthy one lately where I'm going to yoga and I'm you know doing all these things to just fill in the day with not fucking around because you give someone too much time that wants to have fun and that could be a bad thing. Oh yeah, yeah. You you'll know. start you'll start inventing shit. Oh. Um, oh, fuck man. <laughs> yeah, I had a therapist tell me a long time ago um, that 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 to 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 leave the house is 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 terrifying, but to stay home is debilitating. Wow, that's a good one. And I was always like, <laughs> shit, man, give me something in the middle. I always said there should be because it's such a small group of people who would need a therapist that would understand fame. Because I've been to a few therapists over the years, and I try to explain, like, again, on the small scale of fame that I got, how it's affected the way I interact with the world. Because I always assume someone wants something from me or comes at me for the wrong reason, but. I don't think there's a such thing. Is there like a fame therapist who understand? Because even a therapist wouldn't know what it's like to be famous. Sure. How would they fucking understand? You can't. Uh, no. You know? No, it's its its, its own it, thing. It's Yeah, I mean, how does Hank Aaron describe what it feels like to hit a home run? It's a good point. You can't unless you... It's f- ineffable. You f- yeah. Is that the right word? Ineffable? I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're, it. you're very effable, by the way. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk about the Torpedo of Truth tour. That was the name, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the title was a little the, long. <laughs> so was the little, tour. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so so what, uh, what should it have been called? Um, like, here and now? Canceled? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Besides, before we get there... Yeah. Um, it what, was, what would have been a better title? Okay, well, um, go, go fuck. Okay. Go, go fuck yourself. Yeah, that would have been actually catchy. Uh, okay, so let me let me paint the picture for the listeners. I'm sure a lot of people were along for the ride when you went viral. Uh, when you. Um, we're posting out of your home a video where you're like, uh, I'm going to go on this tour and I just want to tour the country and forget exactly how you worded it. But I was in Saint, I was in, uh, I was in Salt Lake City. I had just landed to do a Dirt Nasty show and you called me and you're like, dude, I need you to come over. And I go, bro, I just landed in Salt Lake for, <laughs> for a show. And you go, I'll pay you double what you're getting for the show. Get here tonight. So I canceled the show. They were pissed. Wow. I flew home to be with you and I was on the video with you in the background kind of DJing for you as you announced this tour. And you're like, just trust me, ride with me. I want you to come be a part of this. I want you to perform 1980, your song. Because you always told me, uh, you go, Simon, my th- this is the song order of my favorite songs. It goes, Stairway to Heaven, 1980. <laughs> which is an honor to me. It's, it's, that's still intact. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you yeah, said, 1980 just, is a masterpiece. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. I, I and so you had me perform. You said the 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 point is I want you to close the show what by doing 1980. Right, that was the plan. That was the plan. <laughs> it changed. So we fly to Detroit. Um, 
and together with a group of people. The Fox Theater. The Fox Theater. Yeah. Uh, and I remember we were in a private jet about to leave Van Nuys Airport, and uh, I'm like laying down on like a couch in the jet, and you come up to me and you're like, dude, uh, th- this isn't big enough for us. I don't know if you remember this. And yeah, I said, no, I said, this plane is too crowded. It's this too is crowded. dangerous. <laughs> and the air was broken. Do you remember? The air was broken. Yeah, it was a heat wave. Oh, the and air was conditioning a, was yeah, broken? Yeah, it was a heat wave, and, and, and it was so hot in there. I don't remember that part. Do you remember that? Yeah. I don't remember that, but I just remember them you you knocking on as we're about to take off. You oh, knock yeah. on the we pilot were, door. We were, we were about yeah. to leave, and you knock on the door, and the pilot says, "Yeah, Charlie." And you said, um, "I think we're going to need a bigger plane." They, and they said, "There is no bigger plane." So they pulled out another one, and we split up, and both of us flew to Detroit at the same time. Yeah, yeah we offloaded a bunch of people. Yeah, onto, onto the I was other one, one of the offloads. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. I was happy. To, are you kidding me? I'll be an offload onto another private jet. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that's not an experience I get. They say the worst part about flying private is going. Going back to commercial there's once that. you do that there's that yeah you're fucked yeah you know much. you taste yeah. that um but that that knock on the cabin door uh should have been you know what i've changed my mind entirely right right <laughs> right, uh, right right looking I'll, back i'll issue refunds to detroit i'll you know yeah well okay so this is what happens so we go on the tour <laughs> we end up in detroit <laughs> and we get on stage kirk fox was with us uh he was doing the stand-up portion and that i remember was the was, guy that was the comic and there was a baseball player that you're todd zeal todd zeal yeah you're a big baseball guy i am still um yeah. and there was a, a bit i can't really remember because i was backstage kind of waiting for most of it and 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 i remember saying to you i'm like uh, i said something along the lines of so what is this that we're doing and you said simon my whole life i've been told stand here say this wear this say it like this you're like i'm doing it my way i don't give a fuck what happens which is cool i was like all right right on man like let's do it right i got I your just, back i just should have waited a few years before i you know decided not to stand there or say that or wear that right you know? yeah. yeah i got you yeah. and we get out there and then i remember detroit was a tough crowd oh yeah they were brutal they, they were, were well, in Detroit, maybe looking back, maybe you wanted to start in a city that's a little less harsh and honest with the, sure. maybe a city like uh, LA where they'd kiss your ass. Anyway, yeah, they, they weren't s- feeling it too much. Yeah, and they started, Louis. yeah, they started an exodus leaving, mm-hmm. chanting refund, refund. And as that happened, you go, everyone dirt nasty. And I came out as they were leaving right. to perform 1980. And I remember, I'll never forget this. As the exodus of people are leaving, they stop in their tracks like, oh, no, he doesn't have like a white rapper in Detroit Eminem country on stage. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm I like didn't. in the I didn't put that together. I didn't either. either. I and didn't they either. just stopped. And then the <clears throat> booze got even louder. And that yeah. was the toughest performance I've ever had to do was pushing through that song as people were leaving and booing and I was like oh they started dude. throwing shit they started throwing they shit were I was throwing dodging shit. they were shit. throwing shit at me oh. that's why I started to exit stage left and and <laughs> insisted that you that you just yeah. get, you know well, any, I was your any, record yeah yeah anybody yeah. but me yeah, yeah. please occupy this stage well, immediately that's, that's why I had your back so I thank went, you of course of course thank you. um and uh I, I would do it again if you needed me to and you know, honestly, looking back, it was a big learning experience. We 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 got to hang a lot. It was a lot of fun between shows. Obviously, on stage, it kind of took form. And at one point, I said to you, maybe we need to get a comedian to be the glue to hold us together. And I sure. said, what about Jeff Ross? And you said, who's Jeff Ross? I said, dude, do you oh, trust me? Th- this was your idea. That was my idea. Wow. We were sitting in your hotel room, and like this was maybe four or five shows in after the reviews were out, and people were just killing us. And I just wanted you to win. And, oh, let's, and in a minute, let's go backwards to where winning came from that went to became a thing. I want to know the, the, the roots of that. And, but I, I, um, I said, let's get Jeff Ross. And you didn't know who he was. And I said, do you trust me? And you said, of course. I said, he's going to be, he does roasts. He's going to be the perfect guy to maybe hold this together. So he canceled the gig. We called him on the phone together. He canceled a gig, came out, and then he did help the show for a while in that it became a, a self-deprecating roast. Sure. Do you remember that? Yeah, He yeah, came out yeah. in a bomb came, suit. Yeah, in a hazmat suit. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Which was, was funny. <laughs> he was here to clean up a chemical spill. And that's when it started yeah. to take a turn for the better. Yes. Yeah, it had, it had some structure. It had some it's cohesion. The, yeah. Which is what it did, lacked in the beginning. Yeah, and it took the pressure off of me because I knew about 20 minutes in, that he was going to make his entrance and yeah, then exactly. the audience was involved and it, and it became good, more interactive and, and like that, you know. Much bigger safety net than me performing one song at the end. Uh, but you still, 
you still came out a few times. I still times, came right? out a few yeah. times. Yeah. And then there was a guy that was like a local Chicago hire who was sort of a DJ personality that started to do an interview with you on stage. It was a mediator or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Joey Scaleri. Right. Yeah, who didn't last was, too long. He was from Live Nation. Right. But he did he he, he did um, help me save the day. Okay. Because do you remember the bus ride from Detroit to Chicago? When I when I completely threw out the whole format of the show that was a complete train wreck that night, I because remember a lot of bus rides and a lot of changes. So I don't refresh my I memory. I totally rewrote the show. Okay. between Detroit and Chicago. Okay, yeah, and just said, all right, whatever we did there was never to be attempted again ever. Right in any format, um, and so yeah, we just went to the moderator. Yes, which, yeah. which again, Just that as two, it two evolved, chairs, it, two yeah, chairs which, on a stage, you it know? worked. Yeah. It worked, and then something I don't remember exactly what happened, but he ended up we, getting the we, boot. We had a disagreement on something, right? Yeah, we, we we've since patched it up. Okay, he's, good. he's actually a really good dude. Great. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Um, I um, don't remember what happened, but then I filled in his slot. Yes. So by the time we got to New York, I was talking to you on stage, and I was no longer dirt nasty. I was Simon Rex, the right. MTV VJ, <laughs> right, right. who was interviewing you. And that first night we did it was uh, in Connecticut. It, no. No, it was maybe it was Connecticut. I do remember um, what's the where did we play in New York City again? The famous theater. It's escaping my mind. It's a Radio, uh, Radio City Musical. City, yeah, but we had the one warm up show yeah, that's at that right. college. That's right. Campus, right? Yeah, and it went and, pretty well. And we it, killed it. We killed it. And then you and I went back to Radio City after I'd already bombed there. I that's, bombed there oh, on a how, Friday. Okay, okay. And we had to go back on Sunday because you had two shows. Yes. There. Yeah. Fuck. Who booked this thing? Ah. Uh, Live Nation. <laughs> Jesus, don't put a guy in the same venue, three, you know, two two out of three nights. But but, but we did we, we did, did go back. Well, and, they almost and, turned on me. I said some joke or something that bombed, and they started to turn. And you defended me and goes, "Guy, you you said to the whole crowd, guys, cut them some slack, cut them some slack." And then they, thank God, calmed down. But it went pretty well. And then and then actually, Jeff Ross came on after that because then the structure changed again a bit. And I remember as I hired, helped him get the job, I remember thinking, "Well, I'm out of a job because Jeff Ross will come on and take this thing on." But Whatever works to make this thing work, I'll be the sacrificial lamb and I'll keep changing my role on this. And but you stayed involved for, yes, for yeah. a lot of it. Yeah, oh, it yeah, just kept yeah. changing. Got it. Yeah. yeah, it was a constant evolution. And that was, uh, and Jeff Ross came on, which led to the Charlie Sheen roast on Comedy Central a yes. year or two later. That's right. Which yeah. I got to be honest, yeah. I was bummed I wasn't invited to. And I texted, I didn't text you about it, but I texted Jeff and I go, remember how you met Charlie and this whole thing happened? Uh, I'd love to have come to, I, I felt left out that I didn't get to come to you the mean roast. to be on the panel? No, no, no. In the oh, audience. just to attend? I just wanted to come watch. I don't expect to be on the panel. I know my Jesus. lane. So I was bummed out I didn't get to come because I sort of felt responsible for this whole thing happening that I was like, dude, and it's still the largest roast of all time. Who, who is, is? Yours is. Is it really? Yeah, ratings wise. Wow. Yeah, from what I understand, because you and I worked on a Comedy Central show, Typical Rick, two years ago, and I remember on set they're saying, yeah, Charlie, yours is still the biggest one. Seriously. So unless something since then was bigger, which I don't think happened. Oh, wow. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, I'm over And you it. weren't invited. No, I wasn't invited, but it's okay. I if don't take it personally. me, I would have handled it. I just didn't want to bother you with it. I should have just... picked you up. I know, dude, I know. From in a jet. Home, in Santa Monica. <laughs> you would have flown me from Santa Monica to Burbank. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, so then he came on in the bomb suit. The show kept changing and taking different forms. And then by the end, I remember the critics were actually like, you know what? This ain't so bad. It got better. Yeah. And yeah, then I don't we, remember. If, we, we caught a break there. We caught know, a break cause there. Because it, it was really, it was shit. I remember we were in Florida. Too. We ended up in Tampa or someplace or somewhere in Florida. <laughs> I mean, we hit the uh, Cleveland. I remember also another uh, bad part of the scheduling was we were in Cleveland for like four days. Oh. Because there was like a little lapse in time between shows, but we opted to stay in Cleveland. And I was just thinking, maybe we could go another city where there's more shit to do. No offense, Cleveland. But right. we were just sitting around in the hotel with not much to do in the winter in Cleveland. And then I think the next show was like New York. I'm like, we should have gone to New York early, but I wasn't saying nothing. Um, I just remember being in Cleveland for a few days. Like, what the fuck do I do in Cleveland for four days? <laughs> wow. I do remember what we did. We went and watched Apocalypse Now in the movie theater. Oh, at uh, like midnight. Yep. Yeah. You rented yeah, the theater. And they rented it for us. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah, sat behind yeah. you, and I was like, "This is fucking awesome." Yeah. I'm sitting here behind Charlie watching his dad's masterpiece. Uh, is that fair to say? One, I mean, uh, one yeah. of his amazing. Sure. Film. Yeah. A, a masterpiece in itself. 
It's and that was so cool. It's, I, it's easily the greatest film ever made. Okay, I think top yeah. top to bottom. Yeah, yeah. it's hard to yeah. beat. Just and based so, on but watching difficulty. it, with, yeah, yeah, it was just so cool to watch it like behind you, and I was like by myself, and you had your. Uh, there was like ten of us. There right? was ten of us spread yeah. out throughout yeah. the theater, and it yeah. was just and like the, and the sound wasn't good. Oh, I don't remember because that. we brought the DVD. Oh, is that what it was? And the guy had it maxed up. Okay, and it was kind of like yeah, okay, was, yeah, yeah. I didn't remember yeah. that part, but that was a surreal moment. It was pretty, yeah. That I think something like that speaks to. Just, you know, in the middle of chaos like that, wanting to stay connected to something that's familiar and and uh, and just uh, uh, calming. Right. You know, and that, that, that yeah, apocalypse, that apocalypse, apocalypse more calming than apocalypse. Calming <laughs> during the tour. What does right. that tell you? Right. Right. You know, uh, and I remember actually just going backwards. I don't know what just made me think of this, but I remember we were shooting Scary Movie and I was so pumped to work with you that I was in my trailer watching Platoon just to get all Charlie Sheen. Seriously. And I came out to you between scenes and I was like, dude, I'm watching Platoon in my trailer. And you go, uh, why? <laughs> we're shooting a comedy, bro. <laughs> like, That's don't you want to get in the, the funny vibe? Like, well, you're watching the most sad, dark. <laughs> right. But right. I remember, right. like, getting the DVD and being so pumped that I was just going to watch in Platoon, uh, which in itself, that was another, that movie was amazing. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, that was a great one. Um, where did winning come from? How did, did you, come, what the fuck was that? Jeez, it was not, I, you know. Um, People still say it. I know, and I, I I I never made a dollar off. Of right, it. <laughs> right, right, right. You can't right. trademark a word that right, exists, you right. know, or even the way you say it. Um, for years and years, I've 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 maintained the anonymity of of the individual, where it all came from. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. It's a I, personal I, story. All right. No, I mean, I I could. I mean, there's people that have kind of figured it out. Um. It's a, it's uh it's, it's, it came from a baseball player. Okay. So we'll keep it yeah. anonymous. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want suddenly yeah, this no, no, goes okay. on the air. No, and no, then there, but, but I was, I was watching his highlights one night and he was killing it. <clears throat> and I said to my old pal, Tony Todd, I said, I want to meet this gentleman. At least get him on the phone uh, tomorrow. You know, I was in that, that, that head space. So I got on the phone with the guy the next day and he said, uh, he said, Hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm like, hey, likewise, you know. And he said, you know, um, we're not we're not built like the rest of 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 most people. We're not, you know, we 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 are just we're we're different. And he wasn't, you know, this wasn't elitist or arrogant. It was just him just stating facts, you know. And he said, you know, we have uh, we have Adonis DNA, man. We have we have we have tiger's blood. Oh, that's where they came. Guy, from. Guys like us are always just winning. Just and this is all over the phone, oh, shit. right? Okay. And I got okay. that freaking 2020 piece the next day. So it was in your head. It was in my head. And then it started to really <laughs> cycle and fester and, and build, you wow. know, okay. this thing. And That's so she, the, the lady, I mean, she's a terrific interviewer. Uh, and, it, you know, it wasn't her fault. Look what, she, <laughs> look what she got thrown into. Right. Look at that fire, right? Right. She did something early on. That today I'd be like, oh please, who cares? Um, but because I was so uh, just uh, aggressively um, bothered by any little moment of anything in in that headspace, that I got that I got pissed at her, right? And so the next few questions, um, the only <laughs> the only you know the, the fresh material I was sitting on just came flying out and look what that became flying you had no idea out. yeah you had no idea it would become no that was kind of the beginning no. of things going viral too this was sort of you know i guess it was 2010 ish 11 ish right is that right before the tour yeah. i guess so yeah. it was kind of when things were going viral that was a new thing and you used the platform of going on the internet to to do something different and that's exactly what you did but you had no idea that it would become part of the lexicon like it did I had no idea yeah I had no idea and people still say it. My buddy <laughs> texted me that early. I'm like, he's like, what are you doing? And I said, I got Charlie, in, you know, in the pod uh, winning. Like, it's still a thing. <laughs> I don't think it'll ever go away. Yeah. And even the T-shirts and all that stuff. I didn't I didn't I didn't see a dollar oh, off that stuff. Yeah. I know? guess. How would you have legally? I mean, you know, you hear things like, uh, let's get ready to rumble. They coin that phrase and they make money off it somehow. Sure. But I guess that's within the construct of a UFC or something. Right. This is right. just out in the world on the Internet. Yeah. So I don't know how you. I think people were even selling winning shirts out on the streets, making money off your shit. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Fuck, man. I know. Um, you're 
a wonderful man. I just watched you outside. We walked by a homeless person and he asked for, he had a sign that said, uh, you know, I'm many money for food. And you walked by and you looked at me and I go, dude, I, I got no cash on me. I just spent my last cash. And you pulled out 20 bucks, gave it to the guy. And he was, it was just, you're that guy. Oh, thank you. You're thank a good you. man. Yeah. Well, you, you know, always do that. I, I've always seen you give money, very generous with money. If you, well, thank you. If you, um, if if you if you look at what he's already sacrificed to 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 I don't want to say reduce himself, but to be vulnerable enough um, to stand on a street with a sign, you know, um, that's 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 a that's a that's a gnarly place to yeah to wind up, and and we don't know all the decisions or the one decision or what you know what that kaleidoscope of events was that that got him in front of us today with that sign hungry so 20 bucks in my pocket if it stays there doesn't right. it really have any effect you know no i get and, it but in his pocket um get, maybe gets him to the next meal or the next moment or the next person or the next you know shred of hope well, and then he gave you a hug, and it was a nice moment, and then he was—that was just a nice moment, and I've seen you do that a lot in the past. So uh, that was a—that was a big hug. It was, was a big, a big dude. Hug. Yeah, he was a big guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was all love. It was, and, love. and we, we were just, just talking yeah, about that. Talking about right love. when I saw you downstairs, yeah, street yeah, love, which street you get love. a lot of. I get a lot of street love. You get a lot yeah. of street love. I get a lot of street love, which to me, honestly, sort of validates. Uh, you know, when people come up to me and smile and they're like, hey, they don't even know what I'm from half the time. They're like, you're, aren't you that guy? And I'm just got to figure out what they might know me from. It's usually a scary movie. Maybe it's Vine or social media or MTV or something. But usually I got to figure out what they might know me from. But at the end of the day, they're smiling. And, and, and that makes me feel like, OK, I have a purpose. I did my job. I'm putting smiles on faces. Sure. I'm winning. You are <laughs> right. You, you are winning. So to be able to do that is sort of what I contribute to this world is to make people smile and feel better because a lot of people are in a lot of pain. You know what I mean? I go out in the trenches as dirt nasty, kind of like we did on that tour, and I'm going out into the the trenches of America. And man, people, it's it's real out there. So to be able to go do a show and give an hour of laughter to somebody, or to get them a laugh on my social media or this podcast, sure. it feels good, man. Absolutely. It gives me a purpose because otherwise I'm lost. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because at, at at the end of most days. Um, I, I, I equally uh, feel pretty good about, about the experience that, that connected that day, you know, right. or that, that flowed through that day. And um, uh, if, I can, if, if I can leave most situations better than how I found them, that's, yeah. that's a victory right. for, for everybody involved, you know. And right. it's, it's usually um, people can detect there's been a shift in energy with me, just, you know, either if it's someone I know or someone I'll, I just you know, just met, um, they just sense there's a different. There's a there's a there's a I don't know there's something more positive going on. I Absolutely, and, and which is cool. Yeah, which is cool. But um, yeah, it's 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 an, it's an amazing gift to 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 you know roll through life and and people are are, are happy to see it show up and sad when you leave. That's that's a pretty it's magic that's a stuff. Pretty cool. It's, it is magic stuff. It's yeah, magic stuff. Yeah, I just wish, like I was telling you downstairs, that there could be a little secret camera on my shoulder, and um, and that, <clears throat> excuse me, some of these executives or or yeah, you know the people that 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 make the decisions that that we need them <laughs> to make to be right. employed um, could just get a glimpse. Just a, a, a snapshot view of of some of the street love and some of the interaction, and because I don't, you know, I don't I don't broadcast this stuff. I don't I don't like I'm not running around with Facebook Live right. and Instagram this and right. Snapchat that. It's just right. it's, it's not just you. not my thing. Right. And people have always said, "Oh man, you could monetize the hell out of your right. social." And I'm like, "Okay, let's break that down." Right. <laughs> what will that look like? Right. How much of my soul do I have to right. just <laughs> you know? part with right to do that right. and then and then okay oh so i did all this nonsense made a few bucks how does that serve uh you know the next job that i'm approaching right. the next tv show the next movie the next something awesome they're like well you're perfect for the role but um remember all this crap that right. you got talked into yeah you know it's just it's not i don't have the um i don't have the energy to make the time no i get it it's, it's just not, not you it's not it's not it's not it's not below me no i get it it's just uh 
It's, it's just not my vibe. Well, and you're old school too, and I'm right down the line. I'm, I'm, you know, maybe ten years younger than you, so I'm sort of on that cusp of where social media and I've used it to help everything, and it's worked for me. But I get it. Like you're, you're a, you know, you're an OG in the game, and I don't think you need to do it. And you're right. I think you know it may, maybe it's an ego based thing, but I think you're right. I think it's that it doesn't. You don't need to do that shit. And Hollywood operates out of fear. All these executives, everyone's about to get fired, so they're not going to roll the dice. They got to sure. play it safe, and they sure. don't fucking know. So that, that's in my experience, everyone's just scared. Scared, right you know yeah which oh, is yeah. a bad place to you operate out of that's why no. everything sucks right now in the entertainment i feel like tv has eclipsed film to a certain degree there's a lot of good streaming shit out there Absolutely. and movies are pretty shit right now there used to be a time where you couldn't do tv or film remember it was like you either a film actor and you can't do tv well sure. that's slowly bled into one another and now i feel like motherfuckers do everything i mean of course there yeah. is no more rules yeah you know, yeah, I just I I feel like I'm <laughs> I'm the only guy or the the, the only you know well known guy that that doesn't have a a, a streaming show, either right. on Amazon or Netflix or Hulu or <laughs> right, which you, you could and you may end up having one soon, and that's sort of where everything's going. I feel like television slowly dying in a weird way. It's almost like radio or something like FM. It it's just changing so fast. Uh, you got to kind of at the same time stay with the times. I've been adapt. I've somewhat stayed adapting with the times by using my. I, I think I needed to do it a little bit more than you. Um, so I've adapted with the times and use social media and even doing this podcast. You would be a great podcaster if uh, I'm sure a lot of people would tune in for that. But you know that's uh, I've got that's a, a different I, animal. I, I, I've gotten approached um, to do it. Right. You know, um, does it have to be videoed? No, does it? Not. As a matter of fact, uh, you know good amount aren't. I mean, you know, Bill Burr is one of the biggest podcasters and he's just audio and he does it in his garage and it's very charming and it's just him ranting and then he has, he actually just does it alone most of the time. Uh, but and, no, and it how doesn't. how often does he create a show? Twice like, a week. Twice a week. Some, there's different, like I do this once a week. I'm thinking about bumping it up to twice a week. Uh, you know, you have someone like Rogan who there is no schedule. He might do three, three days in a row and then not for two weeks. So that's just sort of random. It's right. It's just sort of, but he's he's leading the charge. Yeah, he's, he's leading he's everything. He's the guy. He's the yeah, guy. And, he's and, the guy. And what little I've listened to of his shows, they're they're they're, they're pretty terrific. Well, he has on really great guests. Which, yeah. which for me personally, I'll watch someone like like you don't have to like Joe Rogan to like his show. I mean, I, I personally think he's great, and I think he's a very smart guy. And really he's amazing. Smart. He's yeah, really people, smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are yeah, starting to see that. No joke. He's yeah. a smart motherfucker. Yeah. And people just think he's a UFC meathead, you know, no, no, stoner. No, no, no. no, no he's a smart man. No, he's he's deep into some other. Stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, he's tuned in, and he uh, he has on really really interesting guests. Which I'll say, oh, who's this interesting? Doctor Chris Ryan, who wrote a book called Sex at Dawn, who I introduced you to, I believe, on oh, set. Oh gosh, did you, you ever mention read the book? that? No, because you mentioned it when I was still hammered. Oh right, and yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, 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 man, it right. sounds awesome. I'll resend it to you. Okay. So anyway, I'll find I, out about someone I might like have that. Purchased it? No, okay. I think we sent you a copy because he signed one oh, to you. So I sent you one in the mail, or I gave it to you. Got it. Okay. I'll refresh your memory because you. I think you'll love the book it's basically about the science of monogamy and us is basically being you know evolved monkeys and that we're, it's that whole deal it's very anthropological and, and fascinating to me and i read the book and after i saw him on the podcast and then i hit him on twitter and then i did his podcast and now we're friends oh wow so it kind of all lends it becomes this interactive friends with the author or friends, friends with, with him chris got ryan it, got yeah. it. Wow. you actually met him on set of typical rick which is the show we did on comedy central which anyone listening wants to see it just go on to comedy central on youtube and you can see typical rick you did season two with us and you were such a good sport again like i don't mean to just keep i don't want to be too obsequious here but you were amazing in that you showed up and you're like i don't want any money you said and i was like well they're gonna have to pay you something and you're like well can we just give the money to someone else i don't want the money i just want to help you out right Dude, that's just like no who else like I learned a lot from you and your generosity and, and you're willing to, you know, you showed up early, you brought your own dialogue that you wrote to the table. I mean, this was just a comedy. So you didn't need to do that. <laughs> well, I, I, if I was there, I wanted to contribute something, you know, but you that's, know? but not a lot of people do that, man. Uh -huh. I have, in my experience, it's usually the other way around is that people show up late with a bad attitude and don't contribute anything. So it was refreshing. You and John Voigt taught me a lot. I did a movie with him and I remember him. Uh, off camera and for those of you that aren't savvy to how a movie works when you're off camera you're not on camera logically but you still need to be there to read the lines and there was a scene where John Voight had to lay in a puddle of water as I'm looking at him so we shot his coverage first he's laying in a puddle of water reading me the lines right shot him first then they turned the cameras around on me they dried up the area for him he put a pad down from him to lay on and he goes no 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 
fill it with water again. I need to lay in the water so Simon can see me in the water. Damn. Wow. That taught me a lot. Obviously, yeah. and looking back, it's probably because like he's thinking, Simon's such a horrible actor. We need to help him out. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I was like, holy shit, yeah. dude. How generous. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Those uh, things that's, stick out. That's a complete job. Yeah. Yeah. No, you hear about people that like they do their close up and then they bail. They I've had their off camera. That's an incomplete job. I've had that happen. I don't want to say names, but I've had that happen before. And it was the most frustrating. self. It's, it's like, unbelievable. Wow. Like, what world are people living in? Why say yes to a job if you're not going to do the whole job? I don't like most actors, to be quite honest. I find I, I've been fortunate that um, that the list of of those that I that I really respect and 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 do like having had experiences um that list is so much longer than the short list of of douchebags i've suffered okay well that's good yeah, yeah well again you've done a pretty high caliber uh, you know body of work um i mean was there anybody on scary that that jumps out that uh, that we didn't really yeah, yeah. i just don't want to say yeah hey, it was it's the scary same movie five, no it was scary movie was it how many did, did we, we do work on we together? did three four and five together but i only did was, cameos in four and five correct right? okay yes oh that's correct and it was in five and somebody was you said to me afterwards you said i've been in this business for a long time and i've never seen anything like that huh I'll just leave it at that. Right, right. Well, we'll I don't want we'll, to talk bad about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll figure it yeah, out off air. People could figure it out. It was just uh, you were your mind was blown, um, and that was the Weinstein's. Yeah, we worked <laughs> with the fucking what, Harvey yes. and Bob. Yeah, how that I mean, it just when well, we when we worked with Bob, it was Bob. Yeah, Bob, but yeah, Bob, Harvey Bob oversaw. Ran, Bob was the guy on yeah, set. Right. Yeah, Bob helmed right. that ship. Yeah. Those movies are monsters. Those scary movies. Yeah, I mean, we got to work with David Zucker for those listening. Airplane, Naked Gun, a Top Secret, one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> uh, Val Kilmer, amazing. Genius. Yeah. Um, I feel like you know, comic. The people to come up to me and say this, they're like, "There's no more movies like that anymore." You know? Uh, no. Well, they that got, was the end of that. They got so washed out, right? When when they really just uh, they they they. they uh, what am I trying to say? That that whole genre, that whole spoof genre, got got so overdone and 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 over exposed everything you know? became a parody yeah. of itself almost. exactly it no yeah. longer was a parody because it is a parody everything became so yes yeah right does and, that make sense and, but even in spoof the jokes have to be really smart both right. written and and visual you right know? Uh, and people say hey was it fun to do you know hot shots one and two was it fun and you say no it was not fun at all it was it, th those are incredibly tedious experiences because the de the detail and that kind of humor, people think it's all just slapstick and right. throwing pies and grabbing. No, it's ass. very technical. No, it's yeah. So something either works perfectly or doesn't work at all. Especially with that type of comedy, there's no room for improv. I remember David Zucker Zero. would not let me ad lib a syllable. He's like, Simon, you have to understand when we write this, there is a rhythm to this comedy sure. that if you go out of bounds even one little heartbeat, it fucks the joke up. Yeah, and I, that taught me a lot. And I remember also there'd be times where I would do a performance that made me not likable, and he'd cut and he'd say Simon listen to me right now if you come off not likable for one second the movie fails mm. the audience is along with you for the ride they're rooting for you you can't be a dick for a minute or unlikable so everything you do you need to preserve your likability wow which is you know he was absolutely right and another thing about the scary movies is that if it, it was really making fun of current movies at the time like signs and the matrix but they still hold up you might not even need to know that they're parodying those movies for it to be fucking funny right right it's right. just yeah. funny i mean anna yeah. faris and also is a fucking genius yeah she's terrific kevin hart at the time <clears throat> hadn't done much <clears throat> He Nobody was a knew. new guy. Now Nobody he's Eddie him. Murphy. He's the guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's the guy. He's the guy now. And I saw him since he's become the guy. Yeah. And he, he couldn't have been nice. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. He seems like this. I, I keep in touch with him on text here and there, but he's obviously extremely busy and he'll reply once in a blue moon. But yeah, he uh, it, it was cool to watch his rise, his meteoric rise oh, yeah. from then to now. Yeah. 15 years. It's sure. been because it was 03 we shot that. So it's been 16 <laughs> Amazing. fucking years. Yeah. Wow. It was yeah, on we film. Were, it was we on were, film. They don't do that much anymore. No, they really don't. No, we were, um, we were in, what, we were Vancouver? We were in Vancouver. Vancouver, yeah. When, um, when when Bush uh, bombed the hell out of Baghdad, <laughs> yeah, it was because it was post nine eleven, so that happened at the end of nine eleven. So twelve, yeah, it was right. It was about a year and change after. Yeah, yeah we're that's filming, right. watching that's that right. on that's TV right. during that's absolutely breaks. Absolutely right. Yeah, because yeah, we, yeah, you. I think you stayed in the same hotel I did, but then you got a nicer place elsewhere. So I didn't see you as much because we were staying in different hotel. I believe. Uh, 
But yeah, I remember watching the news with you and we'd just come, because we couldn't really go out into the world because you'd get harassed so much. And so we just kind of hibernate at the yeah. hotel yeah, and order room service. And it was not great news to absorb and then go do comedy. Yeah, just nah, like Platoon. It was, it was yeah. the same thing as the Platoon Theory. Like, <laughs> sure. why the fuck are you watching what Platoon? What were we doing? Oh, man. You know, it's a trip. Um, I stayed in the same hotel room and I was only in town for a few days uh, for Scary Four. Right. Right. Yeah, in Canada as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the hotel room I was in for Scary Three uh, Denise and I conceived my daughter Sam. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, so shit. I go back a year and a half later for the for, uh -huh. the, for the cameo. That's about right? right. And and they say okay. And I was only in town for a few days. They said all right, you got to do a wardrobe fitting tonight. This and that. And I'm back in that room. I'm like, wait a minute. This is the same room. And there's a knock on the door. And the wardrobe gal shows up. And and I I I open the door and I say hi, Charlie. What's your name? She says I'm Sam. <laughs> <laughs> the first person I encounter Whoa. in that room. What a trip. Knowing that was the same room. Wow. When Sam was built. His name Sam. Wow. Yeah. That's just bizarre. I know. That's it's just that's just one of those weird things. Now, do you think there's sometimes in like uh, is there, is it just random shit or is sometimes they're just like Sometimes I wonder, like, you know, there's that one person that didn't get on the plane that w crashed, and that's just a numbers game. Was that one person just lucky enough to not get on the plane, or is fate a real thing? Like, is I always wonder. Is it, a, is it one red light? Is it, uh, I think is it's it a, just a is numbers. It a sip of coffee that was too hot? Is it, is it a phone call they answered or didn't answer? Yeah, is it, it is. You know what I'm saying? But is that a, is, I guess my question is, is there something bigger that's controlling all this or is it just chaos theory and randomness? I don't know. I, I don't wonder. Either. I, I don't either. wonder. Those yeah. are the big questions I want to know. Like what the fuck's going on sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think those are all the answers we get right. when we finally, uh, you yeah. know, <laughs> dissolve from this realm. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> wow. This just got deep. Yeah. No, it's okay though. This is the kind of stuff <laughs> I think about again on my spare time sitting around between jobs, which is getting longer and longer, longer. <laughs> Yeah, but good on you for 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 creating, uh, you know, something like this. Yeah, and, and, yeah. it was time. And, and for you know doing things that uh, that keep you creative and focused. And I need a little structure. You know, yeah. I got to create a little structure. Structure structure's good. Yeah, if I yeah. don't uh, if I don't have something to do, an idle hands of the devil's workshop type thing, sure. I sort of get a little, you know. So I could only you know go work out so many times or try to meditate for twenty minutes so many fucking times. Right. I try to do these things to just stay. But I, yeah. How do you meditate? I mean, is naked. It... <laughs> well, that's a given. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, no, I do transcendental meditation. Okay. Which is a type of meditation where you get a mantra, which is a word, and you just say the word over and over, and there's no woo woo to it whatsoever. Okay. It's basically you just say it could it could be the word um, flabagabu baba. It doesn't fucking matter. Okay. It, the point is, is that you just sit there and you sort of filter your thoughts and just sit there and say the word over and over. And after about 15 minutes you observe that your mind is just a mechanism that isn't you and that these thoughts aren't you and that you sort of sit back and observe the thinker and say, oh, wait a minute, that's not me. And you can separate yourself from the prefrontal cortex, which is the Woody Allen part of your brain that worries. I got to pay this person. I got to call this back my tax, this and that, all the worrying shit. Sure. You can somewhat slowly, even if it helps like 10%, that's uh, enough, you okay. know? So, I, you know, I don't think there's a it's science more than it is some spirituality, I think, okay, for cool. me. Uh, so I find it's just, you know, I'll, but I'm a creature of habit. Like, I'll do it every day for for three months and then stop for three months Got just it. like working out or anything else i get uh, i'll go sober for six months and then i'm off the way you know so right. i'm pretty extreme like that got but, it got it but yeah. yeah when i'm doing it i find it does help and because you're not going to stop thinking i mean you're just going to sit there and the thoughts are going but you just sort of hit this point where you're like oh i see that's these are just programmed things happening it's not me but Is doesn't it, doesn't that word morph into other words like you know, wash rag, yeah. handbag, you know, yeah. Uh, all that happens. It turns into it. Yeah, yeah. All that I've happens. I've tried the meditating, uh -huh. but uh, but then I'm meditating on on the shit that I have to do, like in the next hour. But that's okay. And the meditation's but, making me late. Right now, I'm resentful. Right now, I'm I'm, I'm already you know. I'm, no, I'm, I get I'm, it. I'm writing stories that haven't happened. No, I get it. And and you're like me. I think you have a very fast. Uh, monkey brain and I don't mean that in a bad way but we're just we think and move fast and sure it's, it's hard to just sit in stillness right you know? for me I'm so I'm just I've been working at that and it's it's just it's a big challenge you'd think it'd be easy to sit still I'm thinking about doing one of those Vipassana retreats where you do like five to ten days of not a word and you sit in silence at a retreat just to see what the fuck goes on up here because wow. I have friends that have done it and they're like dude you want 
Okay, it's one thing to go take some mushrooms or to go fucking like deal. You, know, you, know, you want to deal with some shit? Go sit sober by yourself with your thoughts for a few days and see what the fuck happens. Wow. Wow. Is it right? Yeah. Because that's what's scary. It's like you versus you in there. Like what's going to come up? You know, and I hear after like three days, you kind of push through and it becomes, but those first three days, I mean, I know people have stormed out. They can't do it. So Seriously. I want to just face the challenge. Wow. I want to see what would happen. Where does this occur? What part of the world? Um, all the, over. Oh, oh, yeah. You could do it in California. There's re meditation retreats everywhere. And I just, I just like trying weird new shit that's outside of my comfort zone. Um, I'm doing scuba diving right now. So that stands for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For those of you that don't know. <laughs> yeah. Now, have you ever done it before? No, this is my first time. So I just wow. did my first pool session, and now I got to go in the ocean for two dives after doing a 15 hour exam that I passed. I got a 94%. Was it good? I was surprised. Wow. Yeah, I studied and got it. And then now I got to get in the water, and it's talk about meditate if you're under there. Have you ever done it? Uh, yeah, for like five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's just you and your went, breath. It went bad fast. Did it really? Yeah. What happened? Uh, I was doing a movie called Navy Seals, right. and there's a scene at the end where. Um, uh, I'm in a fight with a bad guy underwater. And so they <laughs> they took me through like an hour of training. It wasn't it wasn't enough, you know, uh, but it was towards the end of the movie. And so um, they put these weight belts on me. Mm -hmm. They got me used to, you know, breathing. But it was on a um, it, it was it was on a, it was on a line on a pulley to get you out of there. Oh, no, the, oh. the breathing was oh, oh. wasn't out of a tank. Oh. It was on a line to the surface. Uh, you were in a pool or the ocean? Well, I was in a pool. Okay. I was in a tank. Okay. On a sound stage. On a sound stage. And so I was to go down about 10 feet with these weight belts on. And then at one point they would remove the my air from the hose, right? <laughs> the air hose. And then we would do this underwater fight. And when we needed, you know, needed air again, we would get back on it. And the first time they took away the air... You, you know, it's very, very primal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you go back to you survival. Oh, yeah. You know, you're not uh, yeah, supposed absolutely. to not. So what, you ran out of air? What happened? That Did you, because that 10 feet's a lot longer than you think when you're down oh, there without yeah. any air. Yeah. No, I I, I tried to uh, vault to the surface, but uh -huh. I had all these weight belts on. I couldn't freaking oh, move. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, so was, they didn't have I the was, release? Because I, I had to do that drill where you release them and they drop and you go up. Yeah, I didn't learn that drill. Oh, man, that's yeah. a bad stunt coordinator. No, he was fine. He was trying, oh. to, he was trying to get them off of me. Oh, shit. So he finally did. He, he so said, did they get the shot or no? No. No, oh, it was stunt a mess. Double. So, no, I said, look, here's what we're going to do. Um, let's build a platform that's five feet off the bottom. And then what we'll do, we'll shoot this thing in, in, in tighter. We'll shoot in close-ups. And, and then when we need air, we'll just stand up. Ah. <laughs> and it took so, you to think of that. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I can't. There's not right. enough time. Now I'm not, Once you've panicked, that's going it. back to it is, yeah. So that's my only scuba okay. experience. I just, it's not a good one. Yeah, no. I, hopefully I won't have any experience like that. I just want to get, you know what it is also, uh, I, I just want to get the fuck away from people sometimes. And what better way to go than by, well, you need a buddy actually. So it wouldn't be by yourself, but you really are alone down there in your thoughts and in the breathing and in the, sure. you know, I want to go, it's outer space down there, man. There's aliens down there. Yeah, you, think, you ever watch these, they, you know, do you see the fucking, some of these like, you know, cuttlefish and I want to, I'm always in tropical locations. I want to get in. There, man. Sure. Yeah. I'm going for it. Yeah. I I I think they say that they know more about um, outer space and than the ocean. than what's at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. 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 So I'm interested. I just want. I'm just got a curious brain. I always want to try new shit. And, and again, like I just said, maybe I'll get into it for a while and not be into it. But I just at least want to try. And you train in a pool, or you yes. train in the ocean? First day pool I did already. Now I have two ocean dives, and I'm certified for life around the world. Wow. You get your card, and no matter where you go, you can. And, and you know I got the RV I was telling you now so I'm yeah. always traveling around in my RV I could drive down to Baja and go get some lobsters and that come on how cool would that be that's fabulous go get your own lobster bring it up you know yeah so my friends one of my buddies goes by himself at night in Malibu with the light and he goes alone at night and gets uni and lobster and yeah, he's out there bringing home I yeah that's great well that scares the yeah, shit out of me yeah, the ocean at night fuck that's that not, yeah that's not okay so yeah. I'm not there yet but hopefully I, I don't know like facing I, I'm afraid of heights I jumped out of a plane have you done that one? No, Ooh. no. I just felt it in my stomach because that feeling like you, as you're taking off, you're like, oh, I'm all good. And then as they open the door and put you at the edge, that feeling I can't even, you know, when you go over a roller coaster at the top, times that by a million. Yeah. It's fucked up. And did you static or did you, did you, uh, 
I held on for dear life and they told me this would happen because you instinctively hold on and they got to grab your hands. And you go tandem because someone's on your back. Right, right, right. And then they Damn. tell you they're going to tap your shoulder and you have to pull the rip cord and they and I watch the video later because they're filming you. And then the guy's tapping my shoulder 20 times and then he had to pull the rip cord because you're in shock. You're going, wow. I'm falling out of a plane. I'm, your brain doesn't understand. Yeah. They said it takes about 50 dives before you can enjoy it because you your brain is like, <laughs> I'm falling lot. out of a fucking plane. Yeah. But yeah. I'm always trying weird shit is my sure. point. I'm a and, weirdo. And was that the only time you did it? That was the only time I did it. And I would do it again. You would do it again? It, right into scuba. With the scuba gear on, underwater. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> and there's a thing called the bends, you know, where you can't go into the airplane or yeah. altitude after the, under the water. So anyway, I was just learning all that shit. But I'm always going outside comfort zones, trying weird shit. Uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. I like to do that kind of shit. And you, so, so what you have, I know last time we, we were on tour, you had a workout routine. Are you doing any, t what's your latest workout routine? Before I forget, yeah. um, can you add a rear view mirror to your mask while you're scuba diving? It's a good question. I do imagine they, do they, they make could, one. I hadn't seen that, but again, I'm very new and I just picked out my goggles that has a camera thing that you put on for a GoPro so you can film your experience. But I did not see anything with the rear view mirrors. Um, Wouldn't that be kind of cool? To that would be cool to see the shark, you? The shark yes, attacking you. Exactly. Fuck, that's a good point. Maybe I'll custom make one. There's, dude, we might have just made a million dollars. We're going to make rear view scuba gear. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because that's, you know, even when I've, you know, been, done some skin diving, yeah. I'm always like, you know, looking behind, looking behind. Because that's, yeah. that's the one moment I'm not is, is when I get got. You know? I have a big fear of the ocean. Yeah, I do too. It's fucked up. I do too. But then yeah. again, there's some place like, uh, you know, you'll be in like, you're in the Bahamas where it's just real clear, still water. Water and you just 10 feet like that doesn't scare me so much but going out in the pacific or something sure. like that's no fucking you need joke. a rearview mirror <sighs> what's your workout routine these days it's pretty it's pretty simple tell me <laughs> it's just treadmill okay it's treadmill yeah i gotta get my shoulder fixed oh what's wrong i got shoulder too yeah what's wrong yeah i got a labrum thing that needs what does to that be mean? cleaned up it's like the labrum's like the meniscus in the knee Okay. It just kind of lubricates. Is a and, oh, uh, is that a joint? I don't understand what that means. Is that a joint, a muscular it's, thing? It's, it's in and around the joint. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So once that, you get the shoulder uh, or the knee fucked up, it's a tut. The, that yeah, shit's hard to yeah. heal. Shoulders are complicated. Yeah, dude. So I can't lift weights or you right. know, do all these like, all, all, I mean, I see workouts uh, on, you know, on YouTube. And I'm like, wow, it's five minutes and it's awesome. And it's all planking. Right. <laughs> I can't. Right. You know? Right. Um, but these days, I'm more working out just to get oxygen in my brain. Mm -hmm. than, you feel better. Than, you get the runner's yeah, high, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's more of a, you know, walker uphill high. Um, but as long as you get the sweat going and yeah. the body moving. Yeah. Because the worst thing you could do is just sit around, I think. That's when I, you know, you got to, for me personally, actually for like if I'm feeling depressed or anything, if I go exercise, I'm like, holy shit, that was easy. It changes your whole vibe. It changes your whole chemistry yeah. of your brain. Yeah. So that's, yeah, in yeah. itself, that's worth it. Uh, I do hot yoga. I'm, I've become a cliche, but in the cliche, at least that's better than the cliche I could have gone the other way, which would have just been a statistic in Hollywood. Sure. So I just kind of went the other way, which is like becoming the guy who's doing yoga and fucking go move to the beach and all that bullshit. <laughs> but I, I had but to get yoga, out of Hollywood. Yoga is no joke, man. Yoga, I do hot yoga, too. It's is really it, no Is joke. it Bikram yoga? It's similar, but it's not Bikram. It's just hot yoga because I actually went to Bikram before and it was a little, it's 90 minutes. That's too intense for me. Yeah. So I do 45 five minutes and that's enough sure. that's all you fucking need yeah no and, and you flush everything out and you, you put your phone away for 45 minutes and sure. you're just stretching and you're getting a uh, cardio your heart rate's going up you're doing ice it's isometrics you, it's you against yourself it's you against yourself yeah but you know what's funny there's is nowhere it, to hide there isn't but you know i thought that by doing that you'd like get out of your head you'd think oh yoga that'll get me out of my head oh no way you're still like in your thought wheel so it doesn't sure. really get you out of it and then i went and played basketball yesterday and i'm like oh that's how you get out of your head if you're having an objective to do like even running doesn't get you out of your head you're just running but if i'm playing basketball and working on a team with someone else and right, think right, right, you, you just right. get out of that prefrontal cortex into that flow state you sure. know with the zone where yeah, that I find that to be get that gets you out of your head more than even yoga or even meditation. Playing right. basketball, like you know an what, activity. You know what else gets you out of your head? Hmm. Sitting in traffic, <sighs> because the last place you want to be <laughs> is where you are. Right. People don't understand that aren't from here the traffic that we deal with. That's why podcasts are good. 
because now when I get in traffic, I'm like, oh, I'll knock out a pod or an audio book and I'll okay. make this hour a learning experience okay. of sorts. So I kind of just give in and I don't like, cause yeah, everyone just it, it, in LA, it, it, that's what, another reason I moved to the West side is you, I don't have to get in my car unless I'm coming into town to do the pod. I'll just be on my bike or on foot all day. I remember uh -huh. when I first moved out there, I walked by my car and I did the math. I said, holy shit, I ain't been in my car in eight days. I have not done that in 20 years of living in Los Angeles. Wow. Priceless. Yeah. For me. Oh, there's look behind you. They got the, they're doing it. No, no trick. Rear view goggles. <laughs> they're doing the fucking scaffold. Oh, yeah. That's my, that might be my biggest fear right now. Listeners, there is a scaffolding <laughs> going down a skyscraper, which to me scares the shit out of me more like standing on the edge of a cliff scares me more than skydiving for some reason. Yeah, totally. You know what yeah, I mean? Just yeah. my knees get wobbled. Oh, do you yeah. have that? You have yeah, fear of heights? Yeah, because you want to do the, like the, the <sighs> wrongest thing possible yeah. and jump. Fuck. <laughs> and about 20 feet into the jump, you'd be thinking, why did I do this? Yeah. <laughs> why did I do this? Dude, I have a balcony that I cross in the mornings to go to the gym. And right. every morning, I out loud have to say, don't jump. Wow. Don't, and I'm not crazy. Right. You know, right. it's just this weird, these weird moments. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. That you just cross that, you know, you don't, you're tempted to cross oh, that yeah. line. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, I got to tell you, um, those guys aren't paid enough. I agree. Window washers. What do you think they're paid? I have no idea. But it's, it's not it's enough. It's not enough. Uh, I was shooting a movie downtown here in L.A. called The Rookie mm -hmm. back in 90 or 91. It was with Clint Eastwood. And it was on a Saturday. We were working in a, in a, in a high rise. And um, there were window washers, right? And we were on like the, like the 50th floor. And they were cleaning from like 60 to 30 when we were filming. Mm-hmm. So we decided not to um, not to wait for them to finish because they were they weren't just going up and down. They were coming around. You know, they were focused on the floor we were working on. So we just included them in the shot. We just said, okay, this is this continuity is, nightmare. No, oh, no, oh. It, 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 the the few shots they're in. Okay, yeah, it was fine. It was okay. me and Tom Skerritt mm -hmm. doing a pretty good scene, and so and you know, uh, you know, we're waving at them and. And you know there was that there there was uh, you know like a nice vibe back and forth you know, and so um, so we finished that scene, and the next scene is down below on the street, and I'm looking at my clock. It was a big Tyson fight that night. I had a bunch of buddies meet me at a bar in Santa Monica, and I wasn't gonna tell Clint Eastwood, hey, can you get me out of here? Because right, I got you know what right. I'm saying. But I just I had other shit on my mind, right. you know, and. I'm I'm under this um, this overhang at the front door of the building, the main entrance, and suddenly I hear what sounds like a gunshot, and I turn to look, and no joke, uh, about f thirty feet away, uh, one of these window washers entered frame and entered my vision, going. Wait, the human being, the guy we were just Shut the fuck we were just up. yeah we were just waving to moments earlier, reached for a rope, fell off the the basket, and that sound you heard was him hitting the ground. And that sound I heard was his walkie-talkie hitting the ground. But the next thing that hit was him, so I had a perfect view of his of his entrance or his exit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck. His shoes were blown a uh, hundred feet from his body. His, that, so this was thirty feet, thirty stories up, fifty. From, fucking kidding me yeah That's a traumatic experience it was gnarly <laughs> dude <laughs> it's gnarly and and clint saw it and everybody is just everybody's in shock and clint just goes that's a wrap <laughs> yeah that's a wrap was all he said yeah yeah so, double meaning so i can't oh my yeah that's a can't okay okay see these yeah yeah without <laughs> just yeah no that's seeing a, that and that shit i stayed on a loop oh in my, my mind God, absolutely that's like a traumatic night experience. after night after night yeah i uh, and then the guy the guy his partner that was with him on the on the thing he came out and he was weeping and and just he was so he was so destroyed because they were best buddies oh that's so fucked up. yeah yeah those guys yeah. don't get paid enough they don't get paid enough yeah um, anyway i didn't mean to bring no the whole, no no it's, 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 it's that's just okay. you know um i will i just don't know why but made me think of this and i don't think you'll have a problem talking about this i remember you telling me because back in you know people know you had the party days and i think you told me if i'm not mistaken that you had a nickname for cocaine and you called it schnee and you went to yes. Germany to oh, do a yeah. movie. You oh, went to yeah. Germany to do a movie, and you said to your driver when <laughs> yeah. you got there, you're like, hey, do I you was know? in Hamburg. Hamburg. It was the one night I spent in Hamburg. And you said to him, 
I say, hey, bro, can you can you uh, can you locate some Schnee? And he, he and he said, yeah, Schnee. D- do you know the whole story? Yeah. Well, th- please reiterate it because I think it's fucking amazing. He says, <laughs> <laughs> we thought Schnee was a word we just made up, it, just a code word. Well, it like, was in like, your mind. Like geese, right? Right. So, <laughs> so the guy comes back. I'm in the bar, and he, he gives me the high sign. And so we're gonna go to this other bar. And I'm in the back seat, and he hands me a bindle, right? And so... A little glass bindle? Like, no, like what, a paper, paper bindle. Paper bindle, yeah. okay. So we're going through the streets, and I break it open, and I can't really see, because it's super dark, you know? And I grab a giant pinch of it, and I'm about to just send it home, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> this is one of those cosmic collision course moments, right. you know? One right. of those moments Like Sam like, at the door, yeah. Yes, um... And, a, and, the, and the quickest and thinnest sliver of light from a doorway that we pass finds its way into the car and across the, the bindle, and it's all brown. But I only see brown for a nanosecond. And I, and I say to the guy, to the driver, I'm like, whoa, 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 bro, what the fuck is this, right? And he says, it's, it's shit. You wanted shit. I, I said, what is it? He says, it's, it's heroin. <laughs> Dude, I've never done heroin in my life, right? And to, to never to this day. Oh my god! I, know. I didn't know this part of the story. Yeah, I'm glad this I is this is that part of the story. Whoa! So I was fuck. going to, yeah. So wait, in wait, that wait, moment, yeah, you're yeah. like, I'm about to be game over, game over. Rap. Yeah. Oh yeah. And? So I said, I said no, man, no. <laughs> oh, I said schnee. <laughs> he says, Oh, you mean snow? And I'm like. What, yeah, and he's like, yeah, that is the German word for snow, schnee. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it was just like. So what happened to you after you inhaled the schnee? Oh, I know. I I, I oh. gave him. I gave him the oh. heroin. Yeah, but you had. Oh, I thought you had sent. No, it. Oh, I was didn't about send it. to do it. Oh, you're about to and send I it. Done. Oh, yeah. The dude. amount. The amount. I the the glob. Oh my I, god. Yeah, yeah, yeah you died. hear that story all the time when someone thinks it's coke and yeah. it's heroin. It's like the yeah. that's the age old fucking thing. Yeah. Good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. Yeah. So oh, so shit, yeah. Dude. So then I said, well, fuck all this. Here, keep the heroin. Let's go get some schnee. Right. And, and uh, how was the German schnee? Compared it was to- am- it was amazing because right. uh, I remember. Uh, you know, you hear all these stories from the '80s and the quality of the cocaine and this and that, and and it was finally in in that one brief moment in, mm. in Hamburg. It, it was that you you ate on it, right. you, you you socialized slept on, on it, it. you right, slept yeah. on it, you right. did other things on it, yeah. So the '80s, man. You know, you got to. I was a kid in the '80s, but I felt like you had the last window of the greatest era in our lifetime. In that, the '80s was pre-cell phone, pre-internet, pre-social media. It was the last real moment in history where the music, the culture, the 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 uh, the film. It was the, that was the fucking best. And yeah. I look back, I'm like, was it just that I? Is it fond in my memories because I lived through it, or was it really as amazing as I think? Was the '80s it? Was that? They were for pretty, you. They were pretty fabulous, but um, but yeah, I mean, I I left high school in '83. Okay, so I was still, you know, really. Uh, you were still young. Young. Um, up well, that's your 80s. prime. Yeah. Um, so you're no the '80s. Uh, yeah, but even like into the mid '90s. The, those were pretty right. pretty groovy. Yeah, as, I got to experience well. the early '90s yeah. in New York. That was a yeah. good time. It was still pre. I feel like it's. The cell phone and the internet world changed everything so dramatically. And and forever. Yeah, there's no going and back. And forever. Yeah, yeah, there's really no going back. And I don't want to be those like, oh, but back in my day, we used to have to read out of a book. But it's become that. It I mean, is, it, yeah. I feel sorry for these kids. You see them so plugged in. I saw a kid at the airport, and it's mom, the child. It's I don't know if it was a boy or a girl, the baby child. Um, the mom gave... A, a magazine to the kid to distract the kid because she was talking and the kid picked up the magazine and went like this it thought it was an ipad it was swiping oh, it didn't seriously. know to turn the page that happened so i'm like oh that's the new world wow. we're living in wow yeah, i, that's what I sometimes from. just i don't know where it it's, comes from that type of moment um i'll be holding uh an old photo and even in a frame and 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 just subconsciously will <laughs> we'll, right, go to we'll, zoom because I want to see something in the background. Right. And then I'm like, what am I doing? What do have I become? Read, what have still, I become? 
Uh, do you still read a lot? Because you, I, you I, read a lot. I wish I had more time. Does to, your attention span read. shorter? Because you're not. But you're it's, you don't, you're not a phone guy. You're not. Well, it, the phone, but with all the kids and right. how spread out they are, right. and looking for work and all that, it's you know I I, I can't just stick the phone in a drawer. And right. No. No. You need exist, it. It's a necessary you know? evil. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't mind. I I can watch TV shows and films and and deal with the phone. You know, off and on. But reading, it's it it it, it it's impossible. Yeah, it's, it's got impossible <clears throat> because then the next four paragraphs that I'll read after dealing with something phone based, that that you know you don't absorb anything you read. It's That's all about it's all about the resentment you've just <laughs> was just generated through the phone by that person. So I'm not alone. You're not alone. It's no. fucked up because I'll do a lot of audio books now just to get the data in, and I think they I think they say you retain thirty percent of a book. I'm probably closer to twelve percent or something like that. I smoked a lot of pot. And my memory's really bad. I mean, you <laughs> right. know, you, you you know, you know that Gary. My brain's horrible. <laughs> um, Steve, I get it. <laughs> so I find it hard when I'm reading a book. I just read two pages. I'm like, what the fuck did I just read? I was yeah. just like, uh, it. it it's scary. Yeah, and then you then you revisit what you were thinking <laughs> while Dude. you were reading, and it's like, where did Dude. that come from? But the phone has those moments when, you know, everything in your day is is super groovy and chill, and you're 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 completely engaged in whatever you're doing, and then some something just pops up, and you choose. It's a choice. You choose to open a text, right? Mm-hmm. And and suddenly that everything that was that was so fabulous is completely upended because of one little micro moment that, takes. That, that really has nothing to do with anything that was going on. It takes you out of the know? moment. It well, it's a drug. It's like I'm, you know, the addictive personality. It triggers that like that. Uh, um, I don't know uh, the pleasure center in your brain where it's a war, the award, the reward sure. center triggers. Yeah. And it's we're just humans and it's just we're we're just all fucked. <laughs> I mean, it's scary. <clears throat> oh, I'm just glad to know I'm not alone because I know. Not alone at all. You would be reading. Not. I remember on Scary Movie, you would have a different book every three to four days. I was like, holy shit, this dude, no fucking, mm, I'm so surprised by that. Well, no, there was an author that I was deep into oh. at the time. Yeah. Oh, who's that? Yeah, it was Michael Connolly. Okay. That's who I was reading. Is that fiction? Yeah, uh, crime fiction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And interestingly enough, uh, he, he created the Bosch character. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I don't watch I don't that know. one yet. Yeah. You've not seen the show? No, I haven't seen it it's yet. It's terrific. Okay, I'll it's check it out. What excellent. other shows are you watching? Um, What's another good one that, that Charlie Sheen I mean, watches? Do you, do you really want to know what I'm watching yeah, I'm, right now? Yeah, I'm curious. Right now. Right now. I started watching Cheers. Oh, just to, just for the remnant. I've never seen it. You've never seen... <laughs> You've never seen no. Cheers? It's I mean, a masterpiece. I, I know enough about it, and I know yeah. the, you know, the history of it. It's fucking amazing, man. So I said, okay, I need to own... The history of Cheers. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I need to. Absorb you just this. missed that whole window. Yeah, you know yeah. what it is with Sam Malone and Diane, whatever her last name is. It, it, it's like moonlighting. You, you're constantly watching the two characters. You yeah. want them. That tension that they had sure. between them, that chemistry was magic and very rare on camera. Yeah, yeah, that's a good it's one, man. Terrific. It's terrific. And it, and it and the way it and I I'm early like super early in the morning on the treadmill watching Cheers. Great. Kind of it sets the day up nicely. Yeah, you got a good 15 seasons to catch up on or so, right? Didn't <laughs> it go about that long? It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm mid season. Everyone dies at the end. <laughs> uh, good to know dude all right well i know oh, you oh, but, yeah. and, and i'm i'm watching the x files oh yeah good rewatch never saw the x files you know so these are all new to okay, me good and i'm watching csi oh, okay yes which one just regular CSI. regular csi from okay. the beginning it's okay fabulous all right good that, yeah. that's what i'm watching i mean i i am up to speed on a lot of the contemporary shows okay. i'm not completely in the no, dark okay, and <laughs> living no, in my trunk it's, it's good to go rewatch or or, or it, sometimes you go back and watch a show you're like how the fuck did i think this was good 20 years ago like right, some shows right. don't hold up. No, these are these are holding okay, up good, nicely. Good. I'm going to yeah, check out yeah. Bosch, B Botch or B Bosch, Bosch, B O C H. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah I heard it's, it's good. I'll terrific. check that one. Out. And Titus is fabulous. It's I really well done. I love you for giving me your time. I know you got to go get your daughter at school, so uh, traffic's a motherfucker. Throw on a podcast <laughs> on your drive <laughs> okay. and, and continue. You, your energy is amazing. You look great, oh, and, thank I, you. and I love thank you so you. much. I love you too, man. I thank really you. do. Thank this you for is, giving me your time. No, this is amazing. Okay, I'm, good. I was, I'm, I'm honored to be here and, 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 and to participate in this. And, and you've got me thinking about, you know, because I get offered 
of these things, N- not just to be a guest, but to do my own. I think you'd be great at and, it, and I uh, think you could monetize it and have a good time and have some great conversations because people need to see this side of you. That okay. I don't think people have really got to know. You know, I know this side of you. I want right, the world to right, see right. the great okay. guy that you're on, the intelligent, wonderful well, let's, man. Let's you and I okay. continue this that Sounds that good. part of the dialogue. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Thanks Riley. for having me. Thank you.